I can't hear you. No. Hold on, here it goes. There you are, I can hear you now. Yeah. Oh my word. Yeah. Technology, eh? At its best. <laughs> you gotta see the oh, setup man. I got here to hold the phone. That's what's really good. Mate, I've got like a professional because my missus she does YouTube and stuff and I've got like a professional studio set up and it's still not working, so oh dear me. I uh I escaped into my uh man cave up here. Oh yeah. And yeah, yeah, I have a man cave on top, you know, and uh I spent a lot of time here tinkering around and making yeah. painting and doing whatever. Yeah, we've uh, we've we because we we live in an apartment. We've only got like one spare room, and my missus has claimed that for a studio. So I've just got the sofa and the kitchen table to do my stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> so you love your privacy, I take it. Yeah, it's fine. One day, one day I'll get there. Um, I guess let's just jump into it. Um, I wanted to first of just talk about your experience with Miami because I think that is uh, probably the thing you're most known for uh, to the to the general public. Um, and just, I guess, how, how you even just, that came about, like how, how was it something that <clears throat> the, it was your idea and you went to people with, or was it just someone, someone that came to you and liked how you did things or how, how did that, how did that go? Well, it's kind of a long story, but I'll try to make it as uh, short as possible. <laughs> so, but, um, at the time I was living in New York city and I was tattooing in New York Adorn. Uh, about two or three times a week, and the rest of the time I was uh, I was working in nightlife, you know, in a in a club. Really? And, uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, I was uh, involved with a a new bar that's like a lounge that opened in New York City that I opened with a friend of mine, and um, you know it was taking a lot of my time. So tattooing was basically. Uh, I don't know, something that I did three days out of the week, you know, it wasn't my main job at the time. And, yeah. and it was kind of cool because it, 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 you know, like I didn't rely on tattooing for making a living. So it was tattooing because I love tattooing, you know, and yeah, I was pretty really lucky at the time to do it. Long story short, um, one day, one of my friends that owns another bar around the corner called me and said, uh, listen, one of my friends that's a producer wants to meet you. And he wants to shoot you an idea. He wants to talk to you about, you know, potentially helping him with this idea for a tattoo show. And I was like, well, you know, tell him to come by the bar, you know, and I'll talk to him. Yeah. Um, we had met, talked over. He had basically had been casting already for a few months, you know, looking for yeah. cast members. And uh, gave me a list of all the people that, get, that interviewed for it. And, and I was like, I knew a lot of them, you know, like there was a lot of good people tattooers period on on there and i i guess what they were looking for is uh you know more personalities at the time and yeah. um you know like the more we talked the more he was like man you know uh, i think you would actually work for this rather than why don't you try to do it? i was like listen i'm not i don't have a tattoo shop first of all and um, I live up here. I don't live, you know, like I, I don't have a tattoo shop in New York. And the only tattoo shop I really would ever have is back in Miami. Right. I was like, um, I'm working here, you know, in a shop that I'm happy to be around. Yeah. So um, basically, um, things kind of fast forwarded, you know, with between me and him. And he was like, listen, I think you should really do this. And uh, we came back to Miami and shot a pilot. <laughs> and... It shopped for a few months. We never heard anything back. And all of a sudden, one day, you know, like, uh, they call up and they're like, listen, Discovery wants to buy it. And, you know, you think about when you shoot a little pilot, it's a five-minute teaser, you know. You don't really have a lot of idea what can happen from it, you know. Yeah. Um, the whole idea was it, which was the curse, is that to have every tattoo have a story. Because I knew that nothing would be compelling enough for people to sit there and and just view tattooing being done. Right, right? yeah. That's like especially, especially, especially at that time as well, because there was nothing. No, nothing, there was nothing. Was there? And I think there was, there was kind of that, uh, also that idea of that you're, uh, you're a live freak show. And they were yeah. looking for that, you know? So at the yeah. time, you know, you're talking about 15 years ago, there wasn't, tattooing wasn't accepted the way it is today, you know? There was... And I think, they, I think they looked still, at us like monkeys, tattoo monkeys. You know? Yeah, I think it, you, you still find that. Um, may, maybe, maybe not now, but I remember when I first started doing conventions, 
that that was kind of some of the the littler conventions that's how it was like people would go there like local people would go there because they were going to see people with like toes on their necks and toes on their hands and stuff and yeah. I, I think that that so i guess in the general public that was yeah they just want to have a peek into the freak world that is tattooing a hundred percent i mean you know when when you when you look back at how, how big of a difference it's it, that's happened since 15 years ago you know yeah. i never I, we never thought it would ever be like that you know yeah. we first of all never thought that anything will come out of a show so <laughs> when they came yeah. and they said listen we want to shoot six episodes we're like okay well that's free promo for a tattoo shop and we're gonna yeah. have a great advertisement for our shop and we're gonna go back yeah. to normal you yeah. know and um you basically all of a sudden you just get sucked into this roller coaster which you you never thought you would ever be a part of and um and i can't say it was fun it was everything but fun which is different <laughs> than what we've had you know it's like shooting the the way you know when i invited you to miami we shot that that facebook show it yeah. was such a different feeling because it was really do anything that you feel like doing, say anything you want to say, nothing is edited, everything is open. It's, yeah. you know, what reality should look like, but yeah. I mean, there is no reality in reality TV. It's true. So I, mean, when, um, I mean, first off, like, just coming out, because I wasn't even tired, I mean, when, when Miami came out, so that was really my kind of first entrance into Land, tattooing probably, yeah. and, um, and, you know, speaking, and um, we sort of briefly spoke about this before, but, you know, Miami was as, as 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 differently as you kind of saw it within it. I think at the time Miami Inc, it, and it changed the industry for the better. I think personally, just because it meant people were then opened up to the fact that you could have a back piece or choose your own idea rather than just taking stuff off the walls. And that's something that my my old boss he always like mentioned and he always said like before Miami Inc, people would just come in and get you know lick and stick stuff. Um, and then after you guys did what you did, that's when it started opening the door for, for custom work. Um, so I think even, I know you have a negative um, sort of experience with it, and, but I think that, you know, and I'm just, many people have told me this before, but it has, I think it has had a positive impact uh, on the industry. And I think, you know, people should be grateful for that, um, even if they don't realize it, you know? Well, you know, I mean, for every person that appreciated, there's a hater on the other side. And sure. at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you ask you, yourself that, that truthful question and you sit there and you ponder over it thinking if knowing what happened with the tattoo industry and it wasn't even an industry, it wasn't, there was no word like an industry attached to tattooing. Yeah. And, you know, I've been tattooing for almost 30 years now. So, uh, you know, like if I would have known things would have changed, I would have waited out possibly to the drastic change that happened but sometimes i think it's inevitable you know like the whole thing is inevitable it wasn't yeah. like uh this was not going to happen this was going to happen whether i would have been in that space or not yeah um yeah. i'm i'm glad that at the end of the day i was able to to do a lot of positive things for myself and for the people around me with it you know so that yeah. that was uh that's a bonus um you definitely see the demise of the tattoo industry losing control of of the tattoo industry within itself. So yeah, I know you mean. corporations coming out of the outside to take a nugget out of our our life that's been our life for hundreds of years and we've kept that always inside and now yeah. you know companies are coming from outside that have nothing to do with the world and, and you know basically bastardizing it in a way yeah. but i mean that's that's inevitable too you know when, when yeah i think i think that's, big, it's inevitable yeah that's really important like you touched on with the the industry coming in and and taking a bit of our you know a bit of us and that's why i think even like especially what's happened now like it's so important to support companies um that are run by like tattooers rather than you know big business uh, i think that's so important to to keep that you know if we're going to help the tattoo industry out and keep it within ourselves and yeah like that it's down to us i think to to use those companies that are you know tower owned and and, and supported you know i think, I think it's important i i yeah. you know i mean listen we can fight it all we want eventually it's you know the big money is going to start buying everybody out you know and yeah. i think um 
You know, it's funny. I just had a great conversation with Tim Hendricks about that not long ago, right? And we talked about it, and I said, you know what, Tim? I want to say that some of these guys that sold their companies in the past couple of years, you know, part of me wants to say, how could they have done it, you know, to these uh, these guys that had bought the company that have nothing to do with it as they built this company? And you know that it's never going to be run the same way. It's never going to have that same respect to the tattooers from the tattooers. Yeah. And you lose that. But at the same time, I said, you know what, Tim, if someone offers you a good amount of money and you could take care of your family and you could just, you know, say I'm done at a certain point in your life, I know how hard we work to get there. And, you know, like I, I that makes me kind of question it, you know, like I, I question myself sometimes by by throwing that word so easily you know that you sold out or whatever it is you know at the end of the day you know we all have the same goals and that's to to live a better life so yeah. i don't know you know it bothers me but i try to look at it in a more positive way and just yeah yeah it's a good way that, to look at it you especially know? If, that, if that's the way it's going and that's the only way we can uh we're gonna do stuff in the future but Whilst, whilst it's still there, it would be nice to support the little guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I, and that's the thing is I still do, but eventually the little guys that make it to the top have a choice that they're going to have to make, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's always that same, same scenario where everybody's cheering for the guy that's climbing up the mountain, you know, but when, when he gets up he gets there, to the top. <laughs> nobody's cheering for that guy and they're cheering for the guy on the bottom. So yeah. it's not... It, it, people tend to hate success for some strange reason, you know, like rather than be happy for other people that are successful and fuck, I've been surrounded with so many people that have done better in their life and have managed to turn their life around with the opportunities that were thrown in their direction, you know, and, and I'm happy. I'm fucking, it makes me fucking happy. It makes me want to surround myself with people that always thrive to do something different and, and, yeah better and yeah I, guess, I mean i guess that's that's based in jealousy as well right? like people see people succeeding and they're just jealous of, of their success and instead of embracing it they you know try and drag it down yeah i mean uh, sad fucking factuality and you know that's what it is yeah. people people will always hate it's an easier choice um it, it gives you that instant gratification of when you need that little anger in you, that one fucking second when things didn't work your way, you could blame the other guy across the street. You know, it, yeah. it's it, it's absurd in a way, but that's the way we fucking live. You know, and, yeah. and we do it even as hypocrites in the smallest things. You know, we just tend to find it really easy to hate and a lot harder to love. You know, so yeah. Um, just taking it back to like not selling out and stuff. Um, I heard a story about um, the whole Ed Hardy brand and uh, Christian Audige and how you were given an opportunity there and how you dealt with that. I thought it was pretty funny. I wanted to maybe if you could tell that story. Huh. Well, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but I think for me, that was it's really funny. I, I mean, I, I, I guess I told them the last time it was in another podcast of a story. So I was like, fuck, <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, it, it was funny. I mean, at the time that, you know, these guys were launching <laughs> this new brand of tattoo wear, right? That's never happened before because the only thing previous to that, for those that knew, was uh, Von Dutch. Mm. Now, um, most people, I don't know if they even know around your age who Von Dutch was, but he basically had yes. this. <laughs> you do? You yeah. do? Yeah. Okay, so most guys, you know, like now I talk about it, and most people are like, well, what the fuck is Von Dutch? I'm like, no. Uh, okay, so basically, <laughs> with that, with that, with that success of being able to build a brand on something that was kind of cool from the street side of, uh, you know, lowbrow type of art and, and everything of that style and lifestyle and everything that came with it, this guy had proven to have a great eye, which was the name of Christian Adagé, right? He, he knew, he mixed around, he recognized cool people with good styles and somehow weaseled himself into every fucking deal he could. Um, fortunately for him, he weaseled himself into a deal by buying uh, the rights to be able to use Ed Hardy, which most people at the fucking time didn't have any clue who Ed Hardy was. Yeah. The, the, the world 
did not know who Ed Hardy was. Yeah. Not even a point one percent of the population in the world, you know. So it was pretty funny. And then all of a sudden, they have this brand that comes out with all these badass tattoo designs. And in the beginning, it was kind of like they started off cool, but then they started bedazzling shit. <laughs> it got really fucking crazy really quick, right? But um, for some strange reason, the genius behind the marketing and the advertisement and, and throwing it on celebrities and this edginess of like wearing tattoo gear. I'm not ready to get tattooed, but I'll wear the fuck out of the clothes because tattoos are cool, right? Yeah. And the problem was is Ed Hardy was too old to market for them. It's so crazy, isn't it? So they came to me in Miami and they, they invited me to dinner and it was a bunch of fucking people at a table and attorneys and heavy hitters from his, his group of people. And I meet him in this really nice restaurant and it was just like, you know, I would have met you at my shop better, you know, it would have been cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, I roll in there and I sit down and, um, you know, I feel this tension of kind of like just a bunch of heavy hitters in the room that are basically trying to corner me in into doing something. <laughs> That's what it felt like for the first second I got in there. And um, he basically was like, listen, we, we, you know, we, we've been looking at what's been happening and, uh, and your face in the world of tattooing and blah, 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 all this spewing bullshit. And yeah. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just a fucking tattooer. And what's your, you know, Tell me, what's the deal? What are you trying to, what, what are you trying to do with me? Yeah. Let's uh, skip the bullshit. And then um, basically he goes, um, well, we want you to be the face of Ed Hardy. I said, Ed, Ed Hardy's got a face. I can't replace that face. You know, and, and on, on top of I guess of they, that, didn't, they didn't realize like, how, like, insulting that would be to a title, right? They were just like, yeah, you're like, better looking than him. You'll sell this product better than him. Yeah, I'm like. What, what do you even know who the fuck Ed Hardy is to <laughs> tattooers? That's why all, all I thought was like, do you even understand who Ed Hardy is to tattooers? Yeah. That at least from my generation that was so influenced by Ed Hardy because there was not a lot to to look at at the time, you know that was that was basically changing the face of tattooing. Yeah. You know, so you had a few of these guys. At a time where there was amazing tattooers and traditional tattooers and all sorts of good fucking tattooing being done, but she didn't have these guys that were surpassing everybody by light years. And that was Ed Hardy, you know, yeah. Cliff Raven, these guys that were just Greg Irons, like all these guys that were just doing shit that now would have been appreciated at a time where we never thought tattooing could be that ever. Yeah. You know, even yeah. when I look at tattooing today. I can never say that I ever thought that we'll be able to do this because in where I grew up, tattooing could never do that. Yeah. You know, but um, I just had to look at him and say, you're crazy, man. I, I can't fucking put my face on Ed Hardy's name. You, that's like, I, that's sacrilege, man. I know, I know. You know it's so it, crazy to think. So fucked. I was, like, I was like, listen, man, I wish you all the fucking luck in the world. But I'm not doing the deal. I'm not interested. You know, it's not about the money. It's, it's yeah. I got to fucking look in the mirror and shit, and that's not me. Yeah. And um, yeah. I walked away from that to lose fuckloads of money, probably. But in a way, you know, yeah, I, like, it, I it, wouldn't it, regret it for the rest of my fucking yeah, life. Yeah, I mean, it, must, it would have been so difficult, like, if you had done that to, like, because, like, going to conventions and, and events with other tattoos, like, it would have been such a you would have looked at people who would look down at you quite a lot for trying to muscle nah, into it. There was know. no way, man. I like, I grew up being so influenced by that guy. Yeah. You know, and they just, they, they don't understand that for us at a time where there was no internet and there was, I mean, the internet didn't fucking exist. Sounds like some grandpa shit to say, but <laughs> that's some fucked up shit to think about. There was no internet. I was going to say, when, uh, so you started tattooing in 92, right? In 92. I was three years old. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You know? <laughs> Just to and, make you feel a little bit older. <laughs> and, and, and you know, I, I was tattooing around these older guys that have been tattooing yeah. since the 60s and 50s, you know? So I was like, it was a different ball game, you know, like it, it was completely fucking different. 
everything about how we got our information, how there were gods of tattooing because they were so beyond everybody. Because first of all, there was no information. There's no, the only, you know, the only interactions he had with the outer world in tattoo was to go buy a magazine once a month and see 50 pages yeah. of tattoos. There was no Instagram. There was nothing. Yeah. So you were so it, thirsty for it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of crazy because when I started tattooing, because I've been tattooing 12 years now, and that was the same when I started tattooing. There was, nothing, there was no Instagram when I started tattooing. Yeah. Like MySpace a little bit, but you had to go to like individual pages and stuff. So magazines was my form of, of education as well. It seems crazy that there was quite a long time where there was no kind of progression. It just kind of magazines was your only way of getting information or just going to conventions and like speaking to people and working with people. Um, so I think, yeah, Instagram has blown the industry, you know, apart in terms of like information and, and finding I stuff mean, out. Of I got to I got to be honest that I, I don't do much conventions and I can't stand doing conventions these days, but it's probably because yeah. I'm burned out from already. Yeah. When I started tattooing, the only way you can get to see any art outside of your studio, because you were never allowed to go to another studio, you couldn't even do a guest spot anywhere near the vicinity of, <clears throat> let's say, 80, 80 kilometers around your shop, right? Yeah. There were these rules you, you couldn't break. So ideally, there were, you know, let's say nine conventions a year that were in the U.S. in the circuit. And I would hit all nine and then try to hit another four or five in Europe if I could, you know. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's when I could travel because half the time I was illegally fucking here like a refugee without being able to travel. So <laughs> that's a whole fucking other story. But... um. It's funny because I, I think of a, how many conventions I would literally fucking, you know, like fly from Miami, go to a convention in Detroit, fly back, then go to another convention in Cali, fly back, go to another convention. And it was like, you only spent four days at home and then you're back on the road yeah, just to suck up information, you know, just to be able to buy books and buy paintings and, and trade and, and sit next to people and watch and you know, like get tattooed by somebody you want to learn from, not because you really wanted a tattoo or you can afford it, but you really wanted to learn on hand how to fucking do the, te you know, yeah. somebody's technique that you really look up to. So best way to learn was to get tattooed, you know? I think, I think, that's, I think that's still still the same. I think even though we have got, you know, access to, to tutorials and to, to all sorts of stuff on the internet, I think that you know, going to, to sit with someone, actually talk to someone in person and watch how they tattoo and stuff. Because, I mean, I've learned like, even little things like um, like how I put my wash or my rinse cup and like how I hold that and just little things like that. And that, I only learned that stuff from going to guest spots and doing conventions and stuff. So I think that's still really valuable. And, and I think that's how people should still learn, you know, and appreciate it a little bit more rather than just seeing it on, online or whatever. Well, I mean, you know, everybody likes a fucking shortcut these days. <laughs> Nobody fuck, and it's 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 sadly enough. It's in everything that today everybody does. You know, they take, they just, if you don't have to walk a block and a half, and you could just do it in half a block, even though the scenic route is a block and a half, you're just gonna do it. Yeah. So you might as well just walk through fucking rubbles, you know, just because you know you're going to get in in two seconds faster. And it's funny, but that's how we operate. You know, that's that's kind of my uh, my hate for tattoo schools. That that's that burns me more than anything in the fucking world. And uh, yeah. people putting tutorials on online and, and you know, funny enough is 90 percent of them fucking suck. To, to begin with and I'm like what, who are you teaching that garbage to but yeah. you know at the end it, it, it all comes to bite you in the ass you know there's it, none of that helps anybody no you know, I mean like, especially not... the, the, the schools that offer like a two week course and then they get oh, yeah. given a fake certificate and it's like how can you oh, yeah. I, oh, I get them all the fucking time it's amazing but I get uh, like emails I, uh, I well first of all I'm looking for an apprenticeship it's just I, I gotta be honest, man. Two weeks ago, I got a I got a fucking message on Instagram. She's like, "Hey, uh, how you doing? I really appreciate what you do. I want I'm looking for an apprenticeship." 
And I was in shock. And I was like, man, mm -hmm. this, this shit doesn't happen like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like, really? Is this what happens these days? So I said, um, excuse me? Like, I, I just put question mark. Like, I'm like, what? Yeah. So she, she was like, oh, I'm an artist. And I, I finished our art, you know, art school. I, I did my two-week course or whatever the fuck it was. And um, I really respect your art. And I, wanna, I want an apprenticeship. And I just want to be like, I don't give a fuck about what you want. I want a million fucking dollars. Nobody gives it me. What, what, what does that fucking mean? Hey, mate, you know, Christian Orge was going to give you a million dollars and you still said no. God, man. So I'm like, I'm, I just, I'm like, so the first thing I wrote, I was just like, I think you're going about this the wrong way. First of all, I was like, you know, the way to do this is first of all, to befriend a tattooer that might actually like you before he's going to teach you something that he's fucking paid his dues in knowing, yeah. right? Or believes in you, or just, it's not an art class for fuck's sake, you yeah. know? Like, you can go take that anywhere, but, you, you know, it, it's so absurd to me how people yeah. would just think that you now <laughs> deserve an apprenticeship because you want one. Yeah, I think, and, and sort of going back a little bit, like, I think that, the, for me anyway, for the most important is, is the is the personality of the person, right? Rather than, you know, because someone who's the best artist in the world could come to me and say, what's the apprentice? But you might not get them with that person. You spend so much time with that person. I think you've got to be, you've got to be a nice person as well. And, and that's where you start befriending your Taoist and, and go like an organic way rather than, yeah, just showing up with like artwork or, or yeah, doing what they did to you and just messaging you. Because it doesn't matter how good they are. Oh, they, they got to be a nice person, didn't they? So the funny thing, it even gets better, right? So then I, oh I, go, <laughs> I go, traditionally, and, I, and I'm only saying traditionally, <laughs> one might go about his apprenticeship through getting a bodysuit by the artist they want to apprentice under. And then she writes me, well, I'll allow you to tattoo my, half my body. So, when, and I was just like, I'll allow you. <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my head around. I'm like, am I reading between the lines? Or is this like, because I kind of, I'm like one of those people that analyzes shit. And a little yeah. over in analyzing sometimes. But fuck, I like to analyze things. And I'm like, when you, when you, I'm like, from the beginning, I read the whole thing again and again, just trying to make sense. Like, is this for real? Or is this somebody playing a fucking joke on me? I've uh, I've had um I've had, I mean I'm sure you've had the same but like people message me and say like my body is empty like I'm your canvas do whatever you want and then expect me to tattoo them for free and I'm like how does that how have you figured that out like, how do you think that's going to work for you like you can't just <laughs> say oh, like you just do whatever you want and I, and I won't pay it's like that's not that's not how it works <laughs> right yeah oh yeah so <laughs> I went to Moscow not long ago, well, about two years ago, right? Went to Moscow. It was me and Mickey and fucking a bunch of cool motherfuckers. We're actually a group of cool fucking people there that, that came. And I was really stoked because I've never been to Russia, right? And I, I, for, for one thing, I had a blast there. It was really cool. But in the convention, I've been asked 16 times to tattoo them for free because they thought that you pay the entrance, but everything else is free. Right. That's crazy. And I kept on having these odd conversations. And it took me like three people to even talk to, to say, wait a minute. What's going you understand on? understand that I'm trying to fucking <laughs> charge you for this, right? It's not free. That's crazy. And I've never had to do that in my fucking life. In 27, 28 oh years God. of the time tattooing, it's like I never had to be like, listen, let's make sure we understand this bargain trade thing here. Yeah. You pay me. <laughs> <laughs> and I give you a fucking tattoo, you know? And I was like, I don't I, uh, just tattoo you because I feel like drawing. Yeah, I, uh, like, I had a customer once uh, came in and I was, I was tattooing her and I was, I was kind of, I think I just finished the lines or something like that. And, and um, we were, she was like, oh, so, so how, come, how, comes you, how comes you're doing this? And I was like, what a weird thing to say. And so are you, are you doing this, you know, to like, better your portfolio? Are you doing it for like advertisement? And I'm like, I don't know what you're on about. And she's like, why, why are you tattooing for free right now? And I'm like, and this is like halfway through the tattoo. And I'm like, this isn't for free. 
what you're on about. It's like you said on your on your Instagram that you were you were gonna do a free tattoo. I was like, the fuck? And I, what I realized is I'd had a cancellation and as, and the, the wording of the post was I'm I've got a free appointment, as in I've got free time. And she she took it as I'm tattooing for free. Did she wash the dishes for six months? <laughs> I so I was like I, I would have been like, honey, like, listen, no problem, but we're going to do some laundry, <laughs> maybe some dishes. If you don't have the money, I get it. We're going to work this off. I couldn't believe it. But yeah, I was, I was just like, well, obviously this is not free. So I finished off the line work and I said, look, if you haven't got money, I'm not going to like, you know, whatever. But once you have got money, come back, pay for your session, and then we can finish it. So she, she did end up paying and getting it finished. Nice. But it, At it least was just. It was, the miscommunication was so funny just because she started talking about like, oh, you, you do it for your portfolio. Like, I, I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's almost too good to be true. And I'm like, it's because it is. <laughs> I mean, listen, man, I, you know, I've, there have been times where we would tattoo at the shop and then all of a sudden, you know, within uh, 30 minutes or something like that, you, you start feeling like this guy that you're tattooing it because we would have to do by the hour, right? Yeah, yeah. And everything was clocked by the hour, and there was a camera running sometimes that your boss watched and saw when you started and when you finished. It was just like that. At the time, tattoo shops were run like that. Yeah. You know, they were run with a camera on top of the, the station, right? That's crazy. And, and you basically, the guys that sat at home and watched you clock, they knew exactly how many tattoos you did because there was a lot of theft in tattoo shops back right, then. Right, right, yeah. You know, think that when I was tattooing, it was 80% junkies were tattoos, tattooers, you know, there's a lot, people, there's yeah. a lot of that going on. And yeah. so, um, you realize that after a while, you know, everything you do is being, is being kind of watched and that pushes you to, to completely do something different than you normally do. You would charge right, right, by, yeah. by the hour and then you would be scared to kind of like all of a sudden you would cut corners and, and saying, well, listen, man, let's uh, let's let's just stop right here and take a break, and then you would try to fucking add on to your hour, whatever it is, and then half the time they would run and never never fucking pay you the fucking credit card deal at the end because you would run it by the hour, and that would happen probably once a month. Everybody would get a guy that was a runner. We called it a runner. Yeah. You just come in, take a break, you know, and you'll try to push him. So sometimes you feel like, ah, you know, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, but you try to fucking push as many hours as you can. And eventually you're like, you want a cigarette break, cigarette break, and the guy just takes off. Oh, God. That's, that's only happened to me once, and it was when I, like, first, first started tattooing, and I was, I mean, terrible. And uh, I remember this guy came in with a, um, it was like a really boxed sleeve. It was so bad. And uh, so I fixed it all up for him, and then he had, like, a gap, like, like this. And uh, it was like a religious, a re religious type sleeve, and I just, like, free-handed in a little dove just to fill that little gap, and... and, and tattooed it and, that. and then he's like, oh, I'm just going to go to the cash point. And then just, he never came back. And I was like, oh, man. However, That's your only one. Two, two weeks later, he comes back in and asks to speak to my boss. And I'm like, I'm like 18 maybe. And I'm like really shy and like, you know, I didn't want to go and confront him. So my boss goes out there and uh, it turns out that like, he wasn't happy with the tattoo. And, uh, <laughs> but he didn't pay for it. So he just didn't pay for it. And it like, but he felt bad because he was like, oh, man, like I didn't pay him for it. But, you know, I didn't like it. And then, um, so anyway, the, I, I didn't hear this conversation. It, he went and then my boss came in and uh, he explained it to me. And I was like, oh, how was it? Like, was it bad? And my boss was like, it was awful. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Oh, fair play. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. Maybe now makes me think. <laughs> Maybe fifty percent of my customers were just not happy back then. It, I mean, isn't it funny it because could like, be. Maybe these guys were like, "Fuck this, got to run." <laughs> especially I mean, like I, maybe not so much anymore. But like when I first started, like I was terrible. I was absolutely shouldn't have been tattooing. And I mean, everybody's terrible in the fucking yeah. beginning. Nobody's yeah. good. Yeah. Nobody's born a fucking Picasso, you know. And everybody thinks like, "Oh man, I've seen that guy's work." I'm like, "How long ago, bro?" Because. People get better, you know, you actually yeah. learn a lot. You Absolutely. Know, you even even better. like even yeah, even now from you know, hopefully in ten years' time I'll be better than I am now. So it's I think you always have that feeling. I think um that's I always have conversations with people that are just starting in tattooing and how, you know, 
oh, my work's so bad. I'm like, get ready because you're going to feel like that for the rest of your career. <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's no one point where you go, okay, I've done it. I've figured this out now. You know, it's funny because once in a while, I, I'll get somebody that sends me pictures, right? And just like, hey, uh, I've always wanted to be like 15, 17 years old. You know, you look at their stuff and some of it is really mind blowing. And some of it is like, you'll never survive in this game now. Even though that shit that I just saw would have been pretty up to par 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. You can't get away with it anymore. Yeah. You know, and it's it's becoming harder for lower cal caliber artists to get into tattooing these days because they'll just get eaten alive. There's so many, so many amazing tattooers these days. Yeah, I guess I guess when like, different competitiveness today yeah. is fuck. Well, I think also like back in the day, like it wasn't you weren't an artist. Well, I mean, I guess some people were, and that's the people that pushed the boat. But most people that got into tattooing, they weren't artists first. No. So and and now obviously people are coming in that can do like, you know, crazy stuff and, and then an artist first and then a tattoo a second, you know. I think that's probably probably the difference. That's how things I mean, are progressing so quickly. That's kind of what held a person like Ed Hardy different than everybody yeah. else that at his sure. time started tattooing. Yeah. At the time that Ed Hardy started tattooing, there were guys that started tattooing at the same time that just didn't have the talent that Ed had. Yeah. And and <clears throat> although they became maybe great tattoos, tattooers you know and do solid fucking traditional work that's where it stayed it, it didn't develop you know they weren't being they weren't able to cross they weren't able yeah to they just didn't have the capability and the knowledge that. to do it yeah it takes uh, takes that that specific person with a lot of talent to pull ahead of the fucking herd you know and that's what he did um yeah. today that's a tough thing to do today there's so many you know, guys that are that caliber artists that are tattooing now is Ed Hardy talent, you know, and, and that's, that's tough to fucking compete with. Yeah. And I think, I, th I guess that's where like I'm, the branding of, 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 of a tattooer is, is becoming, people are focusing on that so much because, you know, it becomes, you become a brand almost. And, and it's not just about the quality of work because everyone's quality of work is crazy. Yeah, and it's about how they can find like a niche or something that kind of sets them apart without the artistic side, if you know what I mean. Well, I think most of it is, uh, and, and it should be dependent on the artistic side. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and the funny thing is, is, it's like you think, you know, everybody's like, okay, well, tattooing is going to hit a plateau, right? But it's never going to hit a plateau because different art is going to keep popping up just like every fucking time you walk down Miami and Wynwood, you know, and you go and you yeah. see walls that are mind-blowing walls. Yeah. And you think nobody will ever fucking top this shit from this year because what else could you fucking do with a spray can? And then yeah. the next year, <laughs> they wipe everything down. They start all over again. You're like, holy shit. Even the guy that did the last mural last year is 50 fucking thousand times better this year. And what yeah. he did in three-dimensional now is beyond. And maybe we already seen the three-dimensional shit, but there's guys that are doing so many different types of art that even art that maybe wouldn't have not raised your eyebrows so quick last time mm. does now because everything's excelling and everything in art is becoming, you know, we're, we're free to see it and we're, we're exposed to it in some, such a bigger way than we ever yeah. have that it's yeah. going to translate into tattooing because yeah, I mean, would you like a fucking sleeve of eyeballs? No, we never thought we would, but so the guy <laughs> did it on a whole wall. Oh, it's so good. The guy that wants <laughs> to get a whole fucking sleeve of eyeballs Yeah, because it's got this whole niche of, no, man, that's, you know who that is. That's that fucking guy that does all the walls, you know, or that guy that does. It's such a different world today, and we're going to see, you know, forms of art that are going to change everything in tattooing. Even yeah. though me and you will look at a lot of them and say there's no longevity to them like this style's now. Yeah. A lot of uh, the stuff that we know is not going to last eventually we'll yeah. get burned out by time because eventually people would wake up to the idea like, man, I need a bigger, a better tattoo than a five-year tattoo, yeah. you know? And some don't even last that long. So that, that instant gratification eventually is going to break and people are going to yeah. look on other tattoos, but they're never going to learn, you know, what, what's not going to work 
now they're going to find another style that won't work for another <laughs> for five years after that anyway. It's yeah. just going to be replaced with these mistakes, but because art is art, it's going to keep going. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want to talk about, um, obviously, we met uh, when you invited me to do the, the tattoo show, which was uh, a really fun experience. Um, I, I was quite dubious um, to start with, um, just because of, of some of the stigma towards, especially in, in the UK, not so much in, like, in the US, but a lot of the tattoo shows in the UK are, are horrible. Um, so initially, I was quite dubious towards it but once once i was explaining what it was and, and as you said before like it was like a fly on the wall kind of just you know literally what tattooing was and yeah. so you know it put my mind at ease and, and doing that show it, it was is a really cool experience and um, and it really was there was no like direction or there was no like say this again or like you know whatever uh, and even i think we i met most of the guys just actually on camera so everything was like a natural and that's yeah. the thing was, I think that was the important. I mean, yeah, that and, and, it, and it, I think it, it comes across really well. Um, even you know, and I think well, is that something that you, you you put forward and you wanted to do? Yeah. Um, or was that someone approaching you again? No, no, that's uh, that's uh, you know, my company and and I, you know, we basically had this urge to do something to show what what a real tattoo shop really looks like. Yeah. I'm still obviously having fun with it, you know, and showcasing different artists. And obviously people want to know about tattoos and why people get tattooed. That's never going to stop, right? Yeah, I agree. No yeah. matter what it is, it's even if it's, uh, you know, like between tattooers, like, oh, shit, man, what, what's going on with that? What made you want to get that, uh, that, you know that head or whatever it was you know yeah, that yeah, yeah. you put on like what's the deal behind that so i mean unfortunately it is a big part of tattooing because we became psychiatrists at the same fucking time but at the at, at the end of the day i'm glad people are putting some thought into tattooing yeah I, I agree. Of it. but because of that and being able to tell cool stories that were really you know up to date and what's going on and, and changing from that format that was so ch cheese ball in Miami ink of like, so uh, tell me why you got this tattoo, you know, like so <laughs> fucking easy. Yeah. But I you know, we had no script. We were just like, you know, fuck no. it. I want to get a fucking dragon because I love him, you know, and like there was none, yeah. none of that shit. What, what I thought was quite funny actually, um, I don't know if you remember, but before, before I came over, um, I got a message from the guys and, and, some, the tattoo that you were doing on the same day that I was there, it was actually the person had sent reference picture of one of my tattoos. It oh was, yeah, uh, that's so funny. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> and I but, like but the guys, the, the the production guys were like, we because we want to keep this so like fly on the wall and like make sure it doesn't look staged. We're actually gonna in the actual show we're gonna split them apart. So it's, we're gonna make it look like Army does that ladybird tattoo on a, a different episode because it looked so staged but it, it yeah. wasn't it was just a huge coincidence it was hilarious and i i remember when the guy when they gave me you know before we hooked this up and i was like i was looking at my schedule and i looked at the tattoo and i was like you gotta be shitting me bro and he was, <laughs> like, he was like no no but what coincidence of all the people it, the odds are one in a million but it's it unbelievable happened. yeah, it was yeah. Hilarious. but i just i thought that was really I don't know, like such a strange thing, and the fact that I had to split the episode up just to make it look like it wasn't staged. I mean, people would have just yeah. thought, oh, I did that on purpose. <laughs> it's so funny, but for the first time that we didn't stage anything in shows, you know, like we didn't stage anything in the show, something was like, everybody's going to be like, it was staged. And we knew it yeah. was there, like, fuck. Yeah, we had to shuffle so a couple. Funny. We had to shuffle a couple of things around. It was not easy, but it, it worked at the yeah. end. Yeah, no, it looked great. Is, is, there, is that something that you're, you're thinking about doing again, or is that, is that done and dusted now? Um, we toy with it, you know, like, uh, at the end of the day, it takes a lot of time, you know, and, yeah. and without, um, you know, if we don't have the proper sponsorship, we, the budgets are really high, because you, you saw yeah. what it takes to create it. There's a lot, oh, for sure, a lot yeah. of manpower, a, huge a lot of yeah. editing. It's a big production. Yeah. And and we don't want to do it 
to just do it and break even or just we, we want to do it, but everybody gives up work for doing this work. So everybody's got to yeah. make money doing it. Yeah. And, was, and also you want, some, you want something that's proper, you know, like if you're going to yeah, do it, do it properly. Yeah. The, the proper one thing is, you know, if we could do it by ourselves and listen, I think one day and, and I really hope that Tattoo Do gets to a, a position where we have enough viewers by ourselves to carry things on our own network, you know, and yeah. be able to really, really utilize our own network. On yeah, it. But I think because we're almost there, you know, we're almost yeah. there. We have I, I, that's biggest something, following that's in the world, but it's almost there. Yeah, that's something I wanted to talk about as well. Like Tattoo Do is something that I think everyone should be using because it is such a good platform. Um, just in terms of like the content, like on the feed and that is that is, is what people like what tattooers want to see. And you know, I know you've obviously it's, it's doing really well, um, but it, it should be so much bigger because <laughs> it's, it's perfect. I mean, it's everything you need. It, it's getting bigger and bigger. We never thought, you know, we're all in downloads on the app. So it's, it's getting huge. We, we know it. We were very careful about the content that we're sharing. We're, you, you know, we're really trying to, like, showcase and showcase artists and really open people's eyes to different directions, which is, you know, it's great for me because I get to see all this art and I'm constantly yeah. seeing all these kids that are tattooing you know two years and are already blowing my fucking mind i'm like man look at this kid imagine what's gonna how he's gonna tattoo in five years you know yeah, yeah. but i mean more than anything everything is changing so fast and we have to change with it constantly you know yeah i mean you know we, we we talk about how you would come in and talk to your artist and have these these you know these intimate conversations as we see the world changing and everybody wants to do it over phones you know and that's uh it's kind of a crazy thing. I never thought that somebody would have a consultation over the phone, over a back. Mm. You mm. know, like that, well, that I mean, never from, exists, but it does now. Yeah, in, in my experience, like a lot of my customers, like they don't come from, from when I worked in London, they didn't come from London. When I, now I'm working in Calgary, they don't come from Calgary. So sorting out a consultation is, is difficult. Um, Same with in, me. In those instances. 90% yeah. of my customers are not from Miami. Yeah. So they I think I mean, I personally, they, that's it. Yeah, personally, what I do, is I just, I just have uh, an email conversation with them, and I'm really lucky that people, and I'm, I'm sure you're exactly the same. People just kind of want something from you, and they give you like a little bit of an idea, and, and so I think, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no other way around it. I, I couldn't expect my customers to travel for, for a consultation. So. No, and, and, and you know, it's you couldn't even do it if you wanted to because at the end no. it's kind of like these people are so used to using their devices for everything right to book a restaurant yeah. to, book a, to book a ticket to book a fuck to book everything yeah. everything's getting in there yeah. and so we, we know it's coming the ability for you to, to make it easier for you to be able to find let's say <clears throat> there's 36 million people on the platform right now how do we get them to be interested in your art and how do we get them to book with you that's the yeah. most important thing. And that's what we're, we've been working on for so long is to make it easier. So you don't have to go through all these emails. It's in your request list. So you'll be able to be like, okay, all these request lists are people that are requesting consultations. It will even have a video consultation available. So if someone wants to show you an existing tattoo, they'll be able to show it to you. Yeah, that's it, it is, it's such a good platform. And even like I was, I was fiddling around with it last night and, just the fact that you can, because I don't use it to find tattooers. So yeah. I use it obviously yeah, to, yeah, yeah, to of course. you know, get customers. Work. But like, I was using it as a customer and I like searched like Calgary and all yeah. these shops came up and all these artists came up and yeah, just like the little, and you can just scroll through their pictures, like just on one feed. Yeah. And, and it, it's such a great tool for someone that, yeah, wants a tattoo in a certain area, but you know, isn't that knowledgeable about the, the, the tattoo industry. So going through that, you can just say, oh, I like that thing. And, all their stuff's on it, like interviews and For stuff. For sure. So, I mean, yeah. you know, one, one of the, 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 the talking points that when we came up with the app and, and you know, we're like people travel and want to book tattoos when they're traveling, but they don't want to yeah. get there and go look for a tattoo shop in Sydney, right? Yeah. You're going to go to Sydney in, in March. You already know you're going. It's like six months from now. Why not look at the tattoo shops in Sydney already? What are you going to do? You're going to look at the fucking yellow pages in Sydney. So we kind of 
cut everything off, you know, where you don't yeah. have to do anything. You just have to put, and, and especially with the keywords, so you'd be like black and gray tattoos yeah. in Sydney, right? Or whatever yeah. you're looking well, yeah, there's, like a, there's like a filter and then, yeah. It's, yeah, it's there's all these thing, filters yeah. and, and it's being developed. So it's kind of like, think about us like Instagram, you know, the first year, Instagram, the second year, Instagram, the third yeah. year, you know, and now what Instagram is capable okay, look at us now. We're having a fucking video chat yeah. live for people to view. So it's crazy. all these things, <laughs> all crazy. these things that are going to become a norm will eventually all add up to the app's ability for yeah. you to be having the same conversation we're having right now with your client eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. you, I really, you know, there's um, my actual favorite um, feature, um, at the moment is i don't know if because it's, it's in the, on my dashboard it's like the beta stage and it's mm -hmm. um the instagram extension so i can put everything like all Linked. my links yeah. just yeah. straight onto my instagram and it's exactly perfect. so people want to view your whole portfolio and everything what yeah. it allows us to do is also you know like since you can't book an appointment through instagram right it allows, it allows the, them yeah. to go to tattoo do and book their appointment with you yeah. if that's what they're yeah. interested in so we thought about, let's, you, you can't neglect Instagram. It's the number one tool. We yeah. know that we're being censored on Instagram. And, and that's, I mean, that's just the, you know, the nature of Instagram. It does what it does, right? Yeah. A lot of it falls on the algorithms and how you view things, how many people view it, how many of your followers actually get to view it. So it allows people that are going on Instagram or going on ours to be able to look at your full por your portfolio on Instagram and also be able to book outside of it and go directly to us which will give you all the benefits of having the booking platform yeah no it's it's it's, it's i mean I've, I've had customers come through through that just just from searching calgary you know like i've spoken to people i'm like oh, how did you how did you find me um especially because i'm new to the city and uh he, like the guy was just like oh i just i i use that tattoo do app and i was like oh cool <laughs> and it's amazing it's awesome. because you know we haven't marketed it like that we haven't right. really started what we're really trying to do with it, you know, when the campaigns were held back so we can have a good product before anything, you know, and we want to sense, finish yeah. and make sure that it's user friendly more than anything. So oh, this will be a game changer, your... you know. You there? Sorry, you cut out for a little bit, I don't know. Yeah, it's all good, man. So, I mean, with, with the, um, with the feed with all like the, the content and stuff. I think like that's, that's probably my favorite thing about it because you, you, you have proper interviews that you can actually see and like, in, like video interviews and like proper interviews and stuff. Um, and I think that's, I, yeah, I guess if you, if you start using that, like what you're talking about with a production company and doing all your own content, having that in one place will be, be amazing. I think it's coming, you know, yeah. we're working on it. I mean, this, obviously this, uh, this disaster we're all dealing with yeah. has affected tattoo do as well. You yeah. know, we are, this has been horrible for everything. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to just being able to go back and, and normal really life <laughs> normal life back to, <laughs> back to tattoo do to be able to, you know, start working towards something bigger. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad to be uh, a part of it, mate. And I'm I'm happy that you were uh, always uh, in uh, and did all the stuff. So I appreciate it. I'm going to leave you there, mate, because I really need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm a man. <laughs> but it was Good lovely talking. to you, mate. Um, and right, if, if there is any like a, a last word you want to say to people with like advice or anything you wanted to say before you go, then then now is your opportunity, mate. No, nothing but stay hopeful, stay positive. Yeah, download tattoo. <laughs> there you go. Download tattoo. <laughs> right, right, love, love to talk to you. Take care. Be that, mate. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you all coming along. Um, yeah, honestly, uh, I, I'm, I'm not just saying saying that about Tattoo Do because Army was there. I, I genuinely use it. Um, I, it is a really, really good tool. Um, just just for, for tattooers, it, you know, with everything. Uh, just download it and have a look because I can't explain all this so much to it. But it is a really good tool. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions that we didn't answer anything, feel free to DM me um, and I'll try and get back to everyone. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching and um, I'll see you guys later.